And so a lot of this would come down to uh, something I talk about quite a bit, just uh, free will and free choices and responsibility and things like that. Secular naturalistic view, uh, the idea of free will, at least a, a libertarian free will, they don't they don't believe in. They they reject that idea. So I'm, I'm just wondering off the top of my head if these things are even uh, related. You know, I, within critical race theory, anyway, that's not something that I see given a lot of play. The idea of free will or my choice, you yeah. know, um, if if I am responsible for myself, then I can choose to do something or I can choose not to do something. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the outcome of that may not necessarily be equitable. Right. You know, if I yeah. choose to sell drugs and go to jail, that's going to be a problem. And, you know, like I can't I can't say, well, why didn't I become a millionaire? Why didn't I get to own a home? This is unequitable when I've made choices in my life that don't support the vision that I claim I have. Yeah. Yeah. So lately I've heard it uh, often people saying, hey, there's that's the gospel of critical theory and, and and it's incompatible with the gospel of Jesus Christ is there uh, how would you how, how is critical theory or critical race theory opposed to biblical Christianity well I think what's important to understand is that people who get swept up into critical race theory um, do so because they have some overlap. You know, mm -hmm. um, my friend Krista says that, that critical theorists or critical race theorists borrow from our worldview. So they, they're concerned about things like justice. They want to mm -hmm. help the poor. They um, are concerned about marginalized people groups or, you know, oppressed people. I think where these things take radical turns is in the definition of the God, what is the gospel? You know, is it a, is it a gospel issue to be concerned about race? Is racism a gospel issue? Um, does it like, how are, how are you saved? You know, are you saved by the works that you do or are you saved based on the fact that Jesus Christ came, bled and died, you know, and rose again? What are, what are the, the tenets of our worldview. So for someone in the social justice narrative, they would say that, yes, you, you know, Jesus saved, saved you. And, you know, he came, um, according to, you know, first Corinthians and, um, what is the gospel? So they'll say that, but then in order to truly be saved, you also have to do this other work. You know, so you need to read these books. You need to divest yourself of whiteness. You need to be an anti-racist. There's all these other things that I call Jesus plus when in reality, it's Jesus only, you know? Yeah. So yes, there are things like, I feel like with, 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 you know, people, other people, you know, I, if I truly love them as I love myself, then yes, I want to make sure you eat. Yeah. But that work of making sure that you eat does not ensure my salvation. My salvation mm -hmm. is secure through Jesus, right. not the other work. Yeah. Yeah. Atheists can do that too. Yes. People that reject Christ can make sure people are eating, <laughs> you know? So, yes. um, yeah. So a couple of things you, you mentioned, uh, well, primarily you, one comment you made that I hear a lot is that I need to divest myself of my whiteness. And when I push back or I ask more questions and say, well, what do you mean by that? Um, and then I'll say, well, man, my, my friend who's black, Adam Coleman, he believes the exact same things as I do almost across the board. And I've had somebody say, well, he's been infected with whiteness. I'm like, okay, well, what does that mean? And the more I ask questions, it seems like they're not opposed to a color of my skin, but opposed to the ideas of Jesus Christ. And to me, it seems like whiteness has become a code word for anti, uh, teachings of Jesus. I don't know. Am I, am I onto something there? Come on now, Tim. Come on. Yes. What are you talking about? <laughs> yes. Okay. So this is what it is. It is. And oh man, I was just talking about this the other day is that really? we started out with this idea of we need to divest ourselves of whiteness. And when I say we, I mean like society, the, the culture has this idea of divesting yourself from whiteness, which I mean, the Smithsonian just came out with this whole little infographic of what whiteness and white culture are. So it's things like being on time, like <laughs> I can't be on time, and be black. like really, you know, or 
um, just the like, um, yeah, disrespecting authority, ha being polite, being polite was on there. What are you trying to say about black people? Wow, really? You know, um, you know, holding certain holidays, holding certain religions, and things like that, but the or religious practices, the sacraments, and things like that. It's like what they're saying, what they're doing is they're taking the idea of whiteness, which at one time was just the structures that continue to hold black people down. And they've moved that into overlapping with the Judeo-Christian worldview. Mm -hmm. So now what you're going to soon see is that whiteness is going to be removed and the Judeo-Christian worldview mm -hmm. is going to be put in that place. So now instead of people saying whiteness is wicked, they're going to say the Judeo-Christian framework is wicked. Mm -hmm. Now you don't need to divest yourself of your whiteness. You need to divest yourself of the Judeo-Christian worldview. It's going to be a problem. Yeah. And, you know, being related to Marxism, you know, I just start connecting some dots and it, it starts to make sense. It's scary. Mm -hmm. uh, it really, really is. And that's why I call you a hero because we need so many people to stand up and speak to tr the truth like this. I, you know, what's scary about it is, you know, well, I guess I've said, I see either a violent civil war eventually or a revival of the gospel, <laughs> you know, another great awakening. And I'm praying yeah. that it's another revival and people are coming to Jesus Christ and, and seeing humanity for who we truly are, yeah. uh, cre all created in the image of God. So, uh, but we've got to speak up. I keep putting it out on social media. Don't be silent. Keep speaking the truth Yes, and uh, use any platform you have. So, People like you have a huge platform. Others might might not think they have a, a platform, but I'm like, hey, if you've got a if you've got a social media account, you can influence you have a platform somebody. and you can influence yeah. someone. That's right. That's yes. Right. And I mean, I, I I really have a heart for especially white people right now. Like, I feel like my heart is really hurting for all people who don't go along with the social justice, critical race theory narrative, but yeah. especially for white people, because I feel like there's this um, there's this notice or narrative going around in culture right now that white silence is violence. White right. people do something and things like that. And then it's like. Well, as soon as you, you know, speak out or say something, then you run the risk of getting canceled. But one of the things that um, we say on our podcast, all the things is you're going to have to speak up. You're going to have mm -hmm. to because, because otherwise people will continue to do you any kind of way. Like you can't be so afraid of being canceled that you're not that you won't speak up and speak truth. At some point, Christians, black and white are going to have to speak the truth and stand for our brothers and sisters. Yeah. Brothers and sisters come in all shades. In That's the right. You know, so it's like, if I notice that somebody's coming for my brother, I'm going to stand, I have to stand up. I have to say, no, not today, Satan. You can't yeah. talk to my brother today. See? You and know? That's, and that's why I call you a hero. It's, I mean, that's what heroes do. I don't know if I'm a hero if I just grew up in the hood. Like <laughs> we just like, but I'm serious. This is this was how I was literally raised. It was like if my friends and I walked to the store, our parents let us know. Like if somebody comes for you, they better get all of you yeah, because yeah. you know if they come for one of you, all of you better jump in. This is mm -hmm. what it is. I think we've lost that idea within the church, like, or may, I, I don't know, maybe we never really had it. I, I would hope that it was something that was lost, yeah, but I think you're right. it, it's like, we have to have this understanding of adoption of the fact that we are now adopted into the family. We are family. There isn't, yeah. it's not like, you know, when you adopt a child, you know, the, the judge signs the paperwork and now you still got to do some work to, to get into the family. No, the, the, the paperwork has been signed. The blood has been spilled. We are family. That's right. And so because we're family, I can't let somebody come for you and just treat you any kind of way. Cause I'm your sister. Oof. Yeah. Well, you're about to make me cry. So <laughs> that's, that's uh -uh, really good.